Hi, my name is Catherine. I'm the owner of Avana. I'm also a chocolate maker. What we're gonna do today is basically make chocolate from the bean to the bar. So for a lot of people, we don't know uh, where chocolate comes from. Uh, this is a cocoa pod, it's a dried one. Inside you get grains that you can hear. The grains are actually the cocoa beans. Usually when they harvest it, what they do is they ferment the beans because they have a white pulp, which is really sweet, and they use that for fermentation. After that, they dry it in the sun, and from there it's gonna be transported to Montreal, for example. From there, we can start making chocolate. So now we're gonna take some beans from the bag. So basically what we're gonna do is uh, look for the bad beans and remove them from the table. What we do is we sort by end, so you really need to focus. You know, we remove all the cracked beans. Um, you know, the beans that they are like really, really weird shapes. We remove them, it's a sign of bad fermenting. Also, when they're really, really tiny like this, there's no like cacao inside of it. Sometimes we get also like beans all together. It takes some time, but it worked. It. We roast them slightly, about 15, 20 minutes, depending on the origin. And also what we do is we want to enhance the flavor, but not kill them. So you don't want to burn the beans. We just want to remove a little bit of the bitterness, uh, the humidity, and give a little kick to the flavor. So we're getting the sorted beans and we're going to lay them on the tray. So now we're ready to roast. So I started making chocolate after a contract in Peru. I was a geologist at the time and I got the chance to taste some craft local chocolate. Uh, the taste was really, really powerful and really good. So I decided when I came back home to try to find the same um, craft chocolate but I couldn't. I started learning how to make chocolate and make it at home. I visited Mexico a few years after. Well, I saw small shops where they could make really good chocolate too. So I realized, oh my God, this is cool. I'm making chocolate at home, but I could have a small workshop too. When we have our rose beans, what we need to do is to crack them. So as you can see, The bean has a little shell around it that you want to remove from the inside. The inside it's called the nibs, the cocoa nibs. So what you want in your chocolate is you want to make it only with the nibs but not the shells. So you need to vacuum the shells away from the nibs. Sometimes you'll have a little bit of shells so you're going to remove it by hand to make sure, like this, it's not in your chocolate. And the chocolate is going to be grainy and also it's going to change uh, the taste into something more bitter so you don't want the shells to be in your chocolate at all. From there we're going to take those nibs and we're going to put them in the mélangeur. The mélangeur is a machine where you get rows and also a bottom of granite stone. Everything is in stone so it's going to grind really 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 tiny your cocoa into a paste and then into a chocolate liquor, which is gonna be liquid. And from there, you're gonna add your sugar and then you're gonna end up with your chocolate. We actually went on a huge trip of six months, traveling through a cocoa plantation, co-ops, to see what kind of genetics terroir was the best for us, and also what kind of people we wanna work with. We have Ecuador, Cagliari, which is in the Amazon Basin. We have Zorzal also, which is in Dominican Republic. It's a natural reserve for the Zorzal bird. Also, we have from Tumaco, which is Colombia. It's a small community who decided to fight keeping their own cacao trees. They didn't want to plant uh, coca leaves or anything like that, so 
This is why uh, we got really happy and excited working with the tumaco beans. You need people who know about fermentation, drying, and make sure the quality is there so you can really get good beans and make great chocolate. So here we have a chocolate batch which is ready. It's been running for about two, three days. Uh, so now we're gonna pour out uh, the dark chocolate from the machine. What we did is we poured the chocolate into the tempering machine. The tempering machine is for crystallizing chocolate in a good way. So we need to follow a specific temperature curve to make sure the chocolate is gonna be uh, snappy and really shiny and good to eat. So let's do this. So now what we're gonna do is put the chocolate on the vibrating table. What is important is to remove all the little bubbles inside the chocolate because it's kind of picky. So it's gonna be a nice bar without holes or anything in it. So what I'm gonna do is to remove the chocolate bars from the mold, pack it on into aluminum foil, at the end we put a little sticker so it stays close. The idea is to keep all the flavor inside the chocolate bar so it's good for a long time, more than a year. So today we did the Kayari bar. It, it was 80% cacao and 20% sugar. So let's say you have one kilo of chocolate, you have 800 grams of cacao beans and you have 200 grams of sugar. So it's pretty simple, two ingredients. So this is all the flavors that we have at the moment. We have our single origin line, but we also have flavored chocolate. One of my two favorite options right now, they're both vegan. It's the coconut milk, which is a 60%. It's really, really creamy and smooth. Also the chai tea with almond. It's really powerful in spices, but also you can still taste the chocolate, which I love. Thanks to Stereochroma for filming this video for us. It's uh, really appreciated. We are based in Villeray in Montreal, near Jean Talon's market. So if you're ever around, come and visit us. Our workshop is open to public. Uh, we're always there to make you taste chocolate or um, also answer questions. If you're not in Montreal, then it's no problem. You can visit our website, avana.ca, and also you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram on a daily basis. So please join us in our chocolate world and our chocolate revolution. <laughs>